The content this time around is very dark in nature. You think gothic, eerie, dissonant, kind of creepy sorts of things. So I got to work on music that was very dark in nature. And one of the things that contributes to that is basically having everything very low in nature. A lot of emphasis on low strings, low, dirty, ugly brass. When you hear it in the game, it really punches through and gives you a, a really good visceral, emotional impact of what the music is supposed to represent. So it really gives the theme a much more brooding version than we've had in the past. I said time and time again in there, can we make it lower? Can we make it, can we take the tuba down another octave? Does that guy have that low of a note? So I think the music gets this really heavy, ponderous, dark thing just from virtue of it being so bombastically low at times. This is our fourth year in Budapest doing the soundtrack for Elder Scrolls Online. We did more wind than Somerset than elsewhere, and now of course we're doing Skyrim. At the very beginning of the process, I'm writing stuff in a computer, and I'm hearing the whole thing, except that it's all fake and it doesn't sound that great. It's basically just a glorified demo. Brad sends me over what he has composed and I put it all together in a score and in the parts for musicians. And we start replacing all the demo things. Hey, we replaced the fake violin with a real violin, and the fake this with a real that. And it's the first violins at 50 that are what I'm concerned about. And they can decrescendo a little bit over those held notes. Now only um, one change, 137, uh, should be 40 or quite, quite loud. You get a sense of what the thing is going to sound like, but it doesn't really come to life until you're here and everybody gets in the seats and puts the music on the stands and starts tuning up and you hear little fragments of melodies start floating around the room and then, you know, conductor comes in, tap, 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 and then they launch into the first piece. I really like that he can surprise me all the time. As a musician listener, a composer myself, uh, an orchestrator, Brad can still surprise me. He starts a motif, he builds up something, and then in the bass line there is something, really something I wouldn't think of. So there's always a kind of uh, complexity to, to his music. Sometimes there are dissonant parts moving in their own system. If you want to listen to them as one system, it don't, they don't work out. So it, it brings your mind on different paths in the same time, and this is beautiful. For video games, we record mostly separately. So that means we would uh, record strings, then brass. That way you can sometimes just hear the strings, then the brass can come in, or the choir, and it can be combined in a way you couldn't do with a complete recording, like a classical recording. Those pieces aren't combined until runtime during the game, that then get pieced together as you play the game. And you can kind of lose a little uh, objectivity, You're like, I wonder if this still sounds good, is this all gonna turn out okay? You know, it's like taking a car engine apart and the pieces are all over the driveway. Trying to bring out the low swell for a little more menace, so there's some bep in there that you could use for that, and if you can bring the low strings up without bringing the really high strings up. Yeah, I already pulled it back. I'm gonna pull it okay. back a little more. You can maybe bring that one note down one, it jumps out a little bit. Taking elements that have been recorded or produced from all over the world, and then blend them and try to get them to sound like they are all part of one cohesive piece of music. It's not till Phil puts all the faders up and you hear everything. That's the best part, because for me, I finally get to hear it and be like, wow, okay, yeah, this is, 
uh, this all came together. And it's gonna be okay, it's gonna, it's, it sounds great. I'm gonna go hide while we print this so I don't insist on quarter decibel changes. Because if he's running the final mix and I'm still actually listening, then I'll be like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 one more thing, uh, can we change one more thing? It's the culmination of six months worth of work. From the very beginning stages of, I have an idea and you're tinking it out on the piano, to then finally this last, last five minutes of the six months, I have to go away and they will render the mix and then I'll come back when it's done and then that's it. I can't, I can't touch it anymore, so. Uh,